Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Trigonometric Function Basics, Unit Circle, Concept Number 6, Quadrantal Angles, 270 Degrees. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into new paradigms. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2, okay? If I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner <laughs> mathematical genius, I probably would. All right, so inbox me at nemedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. You have lots of peers, classmates, and or colleagues who really could benefit from this cram session as well. So spread the word and tell them to inbox me at nemedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order this complete cram session. And you'll want to share this knowledge with them because they'll make great study buddies. Last but not least, the concept of cramming usually gets a bad rap, a negative connotation. But what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive. We're not hurrying, we're cramming. There's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cram cramming is um, basically taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems like an instant. Let's delve into the concept of the unit circle and the quadrantal angle 270 degrees. Trigonometric values for quadrantal angles 270 degrees. What are the exact sine, cosine, and tangent values for the quadrantal angle 270 degrees? I'll give you a moment to think. Definitely press pause if you need to. And while you're thinking and coming up with your solution, in case you forgot what an, a quadrantal angle is, it's an angle whose terminal side is either on the x-axis or y-axis. Hence, 270 degrees is a quadrantal angle. All right, let's delve into the answer. Hopefully by now you are able to arrive at a solution, but if not, that's completely fine. I want you to recall that in cram session two of this series, we established that the unit circle has a radius measurement of one, okay? whether it's in this direction, that direction, any of the quadrantal directions, in all directions emanating from its center, the origin, the unit circle has a radius of one. Now this is great because it really simplifies finding all the trigonometric values. And before we get into this, how this is true, let's establish that this is an acute angle in standard position. When I say standard position, I mean the vertex is at the origin, the center of the circle. The initial side ray is on the x-axis, intersecting the unit circle. And the terminal side ray is going to be um, a ray that ends in quadrant one and intersects the unit circle. Hence, it's acute because it's bound between the quadrantal angles 0 degrees and 90 degrees, okay? Now, what you need to understand is that this terminal side ray that forms the final leg of the angle, it can be resolved into its x and y component. And let's say that the point where this radius or terminal side ray intersects the unit circle is a point called P, it, the x and y coordinates can be labeled as x and y, okay? That's pretty simple. 
But what I'm going to demonstrate to you is that um, because this point P is the point of the radius, which has a unit measurement of one and intersects the unit circle, its x and y values are going to also be equivalent to the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. You might be wondering, okay, how is that? Well, you have to realize that you can take this radius, or better yet, this terminal side rate of the angle theta, and you can resolve it into its x component, which we previously saw here, as well as its y component. And what you're going to get is a right triangular formation. Okay? And for any triangle, whether it's inscribed in a Cartesian coordinate plane or not, we're, we know that um, the cosine of that particular um, angle theta is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So let's write that. So the cosine... So sorry for the lag time of theta is going to be the adjacent side, which goes to the extent of x right here. So we're just going to say x over the hypotenuse, which is conveniently 1 in our situation, okay? And that works out really well. And we can also say that the sign of um, that particular angle theta is going to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So here we can write that the um, sine of theta shucks this lag time is really irking me equals the op opposite side and the extent of the opposite side goes to this level of y. So we can say it equals y divided by the hypotenuse. And in both instances for sine and cosine, our hypotenuse is 1. And every number or variable has an invisible or implicit 1 underneath it, making it, um, in most cases, a rational function. So we don't even need to indicate the 1. That's why our sine of theta equals y. And also why our cosine of theta equals x. Okay, that's why we can inscribe or well, exchange them for the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And um, this means that the coordinate points where the unit circle basically intersects the x or y axes can conveniently be used to find the trigonometric values for all quadrantal angles. All because of this concept here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and use this to find our trigonometric values, our exact trigonometric values for the quadrantal angle 270 degrees. So because we know that the unit circle has a radius of one, and um, in the, on the boundary between quadrant three and four, that's 270 degrees. We know that the coordinate points are 0, 0 in the x direction, and negative 1 in the y direction. And don't be psyched out about seeing this negative 1 because when we plug it into the distance formula, the y coordinate gets squared. Hence, you're still going to come out with an answer of 1 for the length of the radius of this unit circle. Okay? So from this point, we can easily plug in the values for cosine of theta and sine of theta. So let's do that. First, starting out with the cosine of theta, which is going to be the cosine of 270 degrees, or 0. And um, we have the sine of 270 degrees, which is going to be negative 1. All right. And know that the tangent of theta is basically a derived unit from the sine divided by the cosine. So it's a quotient derivation 
of sine over cosine, and that's going to be undefined because anytime you have a number divided by zero, that leaves an undefined um, amount. I don't even know how you would call that. <laughs> So that's pretty much it for this, and you could see that the intellectual comprehension of this material was not difficult. After the short amount of time it takes to complete this entire cram session, you'll be able to answer a battery of questions um, in Algebra 2, Trigonometry, and Geometry, okay? Because both a little bit of trig and uh, geometry come up in Algebra 2, so they're subsets of Algebra 2. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. Thanks for tuning in.